Now let's introduce uh, Michael Acker from the Südwest uh, Rundfunk in Freiburg, the experimental studio there, who's developed this technology. Um, we're very pleased uh, to be working with him in, in Steingleib as well. Um, Michael, um, yeah, um, hello. <laughs> Obviously from the side of a performer and a composer, I can immediately understand why or, or what, what, what there is to do uh, with the transducer technology, but perhaps you could explain um, how this came to be in the experimental studio in Freiburg and also what your plans are for its development and also something about the technical yeah. uh, way that it works. Yeah, great. Thank you to have the chance to, to speak about this. Um, yeah, the experimental studio um, exists now almost 50 years, so uh, me and my predecessors have had the chance to, to work together with uh, really outstanding composers of the last decades, mm -hmm. like um, Luigi Nono, Pierre Boulez, uh, Karl Stockhausen, and uh, these important uh, composers, uh, they are uh, giving us uh, their ideas uh, how we could um, extend the existing uh, instruments and how could we um, involve the new technologies uh, to the, uh, to the f f fantastic instruments uh, that we already have. But uh, how could we extend these fantastic instruments with new technologies? Mm -hmm. um, and indeed, the first piece that was uh, composed uh, in the experimental studio was uh, Stockhausen, uh, a piece uh, called Mantra, that's for two pianos and um, ring modulator. And ring modulator. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so this piece uh, follows us through the whole um, history of uh, experimental studio and uh, so we still perform this piece and uh, so that are our roots uh, where we come from. Mm -hmm. So uh, the composers come to our studio mm -hmm and uh, tell us their ideas they have and uh, that is like they, they speak about sounds, they listen in their heads and uh, then we uh, work together and try to find these sounds, mm. uh, how we can achieve these sounds. And one uh, very important thing, uh, as, which was my experience in, in my work now, uh, as, uh, like 20 years for this experimental mm. studio, um, was that um, like the piano which has a history of uh, I don't know like 400 years and mm -hmm. development so it has reached this uh, this fantastic um, st uh, stand mm -hmm. or what, what would you say? Yeah, sta stand, stand point, yeah. yeah. yeah stand point. Um, and also the, the performer and the musicians mm -hmm. and the pianists they really they feel at home at this mm -hmm. with this instrument because they have spent almost half their life sitting in front of the instrument and they can um, express their feelings on this instrument mm -hmm. so it's a really a big advantage to keep this mm -hmm. and uh, try to uh, give the instrument new sound so that means we use the, the the whole knowledge and experience of the uh, piano makers and, mm -hmm. and of the instrument uh, players mm -hmm. uh, the musicians um, and try to give them new um, possibilities mm -hmm. of uh, sound mm -hmm. new sound mm -hmm. uh, escapes as, as you said uh, mm -hmm. before uh, that's a really nice word to describe this so these are um, new sounds in a very um, well-known mm. environment so that uh, the musician feels at home mm. and but has at the same time new possibilities so it's actually a, it's a, a, a development of the instrument not a replacement for the absolutely instrument. exactly okay. yeah though it's uh, we've never had the thought uh, to replace uh, this fantastic uh, piano mm. there's no reason so right. <laughs> right. um, but still uh, we have now uh, new uh, possibilities uh, through the electronic uh, computer mm -hmm. whatever um, so we found um, inspired in this case by a composer um, called uh, Marc André he's mm. uh, a French composer living in Berlin and he came uh, about four years ago to us and said um, isn't there a possibility to to let the these new sounds coming out of, of mm. the well-known instruments and then we said yes uh, there are possibilities but uh, up to now we 
didn't follow that uh, really uh, on a uh, consequent way. Mm. Um, but he insisted and said, I don't want any speakers in my new piece. Right, that's the I, big change, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that is right. the big change. Yes. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, the, no speakers, uh, electronics without speakers doesn't work. Right. But, um, it, yeah, so if you are uh, encouraged enough to say, okay, so we leave the speakers away, mm -hmm. we go a complete new way, mm -hmm. um, and we try this experiment, mm -hmm. so which is the, uh, the name of our studio, mm -hmm. experimental studio, um, and then we found uh, this uh, solution, and at this point I have to say that this is not a new invention, so actually yeah, yeah. it's more than 100 years old, though mm -hmm. the first patent has been in 1905, mm -hmm. when they tried to reinforce the radio with the resonance body right. of the piano. Yes. But uh, well, the, the result was not really convincing, and mm -hmm. now with the new techniques and very small, um, mm -hmm. powerful, magnets and, and uh, drivers, mm -hmm. transducers. So here I have a, a, an example mm -hmm. of this transducer. What we do now is um, we uh, put one, not only one, but uh, uh, okay, in fact four, we have uh, four here, yeah. um, four transducers, and put them on, um, just by, by listening, on well-sounding uh, 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 spots. What, what do you mean by well said things that uh, yeah. are particularly resonant for you or...? Uh, or which or? gives um, a good equal frequency okay. response so that there is not one very sharp resonance mm -hmm. and all other frequencies are uh, yeah, not, not powerful enough. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we try is uh, to, to get a very uh, nice sounding equal mm -hmm. frequency response. Um, this uh, we can uh, also do with uh, very exact measurements, mm -hmm. uh, but that is maybe another field. So that, that uh, to to explain all this, but uh, to explain it with uh, just some words, we use the the resonance body of the piano as a loudspeaker. Okay, right. so mm -hmm. we have the same idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we have. Uh, a special transducer for high frequencies, mm -hmm. for mid frequencies, also some ranges uh, are better for, for um, um, radiating high frequencies mm -hmm. or low frequencies and a bigger transducer can uh, radiate better the low mm -hmm. frequencies. So these ideas come from the loudspeaker mm -hmm. uh, section mm -hmm. area. Um, so all these things uh, we could uh, adapt from existing technologies and now uh, we have the very uh, nice radiation or sounding uh, situation of the piano mm -hmm. um, so we use this as a, as a loudspeaker in fact so so, th so the transducer actually vibrates on the body or it sends the sound out to, to hit the strings or how does it how does how can we yeah, imagine this? so this is like like a normal loudspeaker mm -hmm. but there is no mem membrane mm -hmm. here so instead of the membrane we can just stick this mm -hmm. onto the soundboard mm -hmm. and the big advantage of this really easy uh, thing is that you can just remove it if you don't want it in your piano mm -hmm. so you can just remove it and there is no hole there is mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. uh, and you can this is the reason why you uh, can go with this setup mm -hmm. to, to another piano right. and just put it there and it works mm -hmm. there again. Mm -hmm. Of course you have to do the, the, the sound setup, uh, the measurements again, mm -hmm. but uh, that is, yeah, it's, it's not a big thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so is, do you find that the composer will come back to you and say, well actually I really like what you've done, can you change it? And, I mean we spent a few days here working on this to yeah, try to find yeah. the best place for the room and also your expertise saying actually this doesn't sound right so that's for me is an interesting dialogue between technicians yeah. and uh, uh, I suppose I'm a technician in, in the way that I play the piano but obviously the, the inspiration from you saying oh try it there try it there and that opens up new sounds for me yeah. and then we kind of question each other we go backwards and forwards there's a dialogue there is that how you very much see it? So, uh, absolutely you know. so um, I, I really try to, to listen very good to, mm -hmm. to the composer to the uh, instrument player, uh, what are they looking for, mm -hmm. and then we try to go there. Mm -hmm. um, of course, with, with uh, 
the experience you can say about oh, this way does, mm. doesn't go to the aim. Uh, mm. so, yeah. Um, I suppose that's in a sense why we're, it's very useful to have you there because you hear the sound in a different way to I would at the piano. I'm just enjoying the result. Yeah. But you say, actually, I think you should try this and try uh, try these levels. So it very it's an interesting kind of yeah, kind of yeah, looking at the different parameters and how we can get the best out of it. I think. Yeah. So. And at, at the same time, um, what is very important for this that it works f uh, fine and, and uh, convincing mm. and uh, also inspiring for for the right. musician. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that we have uh, this uh, Pianotech software, mm -hmm. which uh, is a completely different uh, uh, approaching of uh, simulating a piano. So okay. it's not recording samples mm -hmm. and uh, then play back the samples. This software simulates uh, with a technique uh, called physical modeling. Mm -hmm. um, the all everything which happens inside the piano. So when the hammer strikes mm -hmm. the, the string and the damper uh, mm -hmm. opens the string Every, all of these parameters are uh, calculated in real time in this uh, okay. so, and that not only for one string but for all st uh, strings right. together um, and that is the reason why this software is uh, capable of uh, simulating also um, uh, like uh, if you play very soft uh, mm -hmm. what would you Oh, yes. Um, I don't know if it's still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if you have uh, just the, the the octave without. Ah. Uh, yeah. The harmonic. Yeah, yeah, the harmonics. Yes. Yeah. So the system is smart enough to to know. Okay. Uh, it must calculate all of this uh, okay. interfering harmonics. Yeah. Right. And th th that is uh, a thing which is uh, really very important mm. to simulate a, a piano sound mm. uh, in a very in a good and convincing natural mm. way because all strings are always uh, mm. um, interacting, and these interacting you cannot do with uh, with samples. It's no, not it's no. not possible. I think that's an interesting point actually. When you said that, that, I think this is something we talked about in the videos that it is not a gimmick. It's an extremely complex piece of software and electroacoustic thing that that's happening there. Like you said, the interference. So that yeah, must be yeah. incredibly complex for you yeah. to fine tune and, this. And this uh, interference is that what makes uh, the sound alive because mm. it's never the same. No, uh, because the no. interfering is always changing, mm. and that makes the, the sound in between mm. the sound. Uh, convincing and, and, and alive, which is, I think, uh, very important for a musician uh, to, to accept the new instrument right. and uh, because then you, you have the feeling you can express uh, your, your, mm. yeah, your emotions. Yes. That is very important. Okay, yeah, uh, so the technique behind this is uh, from a certain point of view very simple, mm -hmm. but uh, at the same time, uh, we, in German we would say the devil is uh, in the detail. Yeah, yeah, well you say this in English as well. Yeah. Okay. But this yeah. is the thing. What so we have the same devil. Yeah, we have the same devil. <laughs> well, thank God we have the same details as well, because that's yeah. why, I mean, you, you mentioned how complex it is, and then I can sit just down here and play, and there's no interference in it in a negative way, but, yeah. but what people don't perhaps appreciate is the amount of work that goes into not just this, but the electroacoustic world. And when yeah. you mentioned composers yeah. like Luigi Nonno and Stockhausen, yeah. Yeah. how they worked with very, very fine detail to make it a very human thing. And yeah. this, is, this is what you are working with now at the cutting edge of yeah. the latest technology. So yeah. where, where, where do you see this going forward? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> you have no time uh, for that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are on, on a, uh, on the beginning of a very new mm. uh, age of musical instruments because what we uh, see now is that uh, our old perfect instruments mm. grow together uh, with electronic possibilities mm. uh, without uh, trying to, to uh, replace these old uh, instruments mm. but take all the benefits of these old instruments mm. and enrich them with new possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think uh, the new uh, musical instruments uh, will be hybrid instruments uh, mm -hmm. where you, for example, play guitar mm -hmm. uh, and you 
don't see from this guitar from outside that it, it's just a normal guitar, but mm -hmm. you can uh, select per voice, for mm -hmm. example, and mm -hmm. say, please more reverb or um, yeah, you could any uh, select effect, any, any, yeah, any effects uh, will be mm -hmm. possible. And uh, the same is with the piano, with uh, other string instruments, mm -hmm. uh, violin, cello, it's, it's possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think within the next 20 years we will uh, see very, very new and different uh, but inspiring uh, mm. instruments. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's certainly inspiring to, to work with it and to play with it and uh, also inspiring to think where... I can't imagine where we'll be in 20 years' time, but that's why we're always <laughs> excited to, to work with yeah. things like this, I think. Yeah, so. yeah thank you very much. I was very happy to, to see you. How, how you <laughs> was uh, playing with his instrument, so that's uh, really, I'm grateful for that. No, it's a pleasure for me as well, and, and like I said, I think if, if it didn't work that well, I wouldn't have been able to do those things, so I'm glad that we kind of met each other on, on a level, at least the instruments met each other on a level, and hopefully the knowledge in exchange, so yeah. thank you very much for your time, expertise, yeah. and thank passion you. as well, passion for music, <laughs> so thank you. Thanks. Thank you.